Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining our webinar today, a disaster recovery program that actually works. I'm Mary Kellogg, the event specialist at Maven Wave, and I'm really excited to have Ranga Sundaram and Mike Lombardo presenting today on disaster recovery in the cloud. The webinar is going to last about 40 minutes in total, so 30 minutes for the presentation, and then we'll wrap up with about 10 minutes of Q&A. So if you have any questions that come up throughout the presentation, feel free to jot them down and then jump in the chat box at the end to ask. And with that, I now introduce you to Mike Lombardo, Principal Cloud Migrations, and Ranga Sundaram, Principal Cloud Architect at MavenWave. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to a disaster recovery program that actually works. Uh, thanks for spending your time with us today. In this session, MavenWave will review what the best practices for building and augmenting your existing disaster recovery plan are. Today's agenda includes a brief introduction of MavenWave, a review of the DR terminology that we'll use during the webinar, a discussion about the best practices to consider for your DR plan, a comparison of traditional DR and cloud-backed DR in GCP, and a walkthrough of a target DR architecture that runs in GCP and uses Actifio for data protection. MavenWave is a consulting company headquartered in Chicago. Last year, we were named Google's 2017 North America Partner of the Year. Uh, MavenWave started off as a G Suite implementer and established a partnership with Google early on. As Google expanded their lines of business to include additional solutions, we grew alongside them. MavenWave has specialized practices for G Suite, management consulting, applications and data analytics, and infrastructure. MavenWave has eight different Google partner specializations, three more than any other partner. I'm going to hand things over to Ranga. Ranga is going to talk about the potential effects that service interruptions may have on your business, and then define some of the terminology that we'll be using today. Thank you, Mike. Hello, everyone. We yeah, all uh, have been impacted by a service interruption one form or other. Service interruption even can happen anytime. It affects your customer, internal staff, and in turn impacts your financials. More importantly, it will impact customer confidence, and in some cases like FinTech and healthcare, you will run into risk of compliance. Typical examples, your network could have an outage, your latest application rollout might have a, introduced a critical bug, ransomware attack, or a natural disaster. When things go very, it is important to have a robust, targeted, and well-tested DR plan. Before we uh, take a deep dive, let's ground on a few key terminologies. Service level agreements, an agreement that specifies what services to be provided between parties. Service level objective, it is an extension of a service level agreement. Uh, it helps to measure the performance of a service. A specific, specific castration such as availability over a week or a month or a quarter. Recovery time objective, also known as RTO, the maximum acceptable length of time that your application can be offline. Should the service interruption happen, it is the time taken to recover the service. Recovery point objectives, also known as RPO, the maximum acceptable length of time during which data might be lost due to a major incident. Um, your RPO and RTO are the key drivers for your DR planning. Let's uh, talk about the DR patterns. Uh, we will briefly cover cold, warm, and hot DR patterns. Everyone has their own analogy. Here we are using flatter analogy to represent DR patterns. Imagine you are taking a road trip in your car in middle of nowhere, and suddenly your car has a flat tire. How you deal with a flat tire depends on how prepared you are. Imagine you have no spare tire, so you must call someone to come to you with a new spare uh, and replace it. Your trip stops until help arrives to make this repair. It relates to cold DR pattern you need where you need to wait for a backup and hardware to be available at a site for recovery and recover your systems. Recovery time could be days. This is an RTO measure for your DR planning. However, you have a spare tire and a replacement kit. So you can get back on the road using what you have, but you must stop your journey to repair the problem. This relates to warm DR pattern. You have a backup and hardware available at your site for recovery to recover your system. Short recovery times as you don't have to wait for the uh, resources available. 
but if you have a run flat tires you might run in to uh, slow down a little bit but there is a immediate impact to your journey your tires run well enough that you can continue your journey without any interruption it relates to hot dr pattern where you have an active dr side you can fail over to dr side in the event of a dr no interruption now to back to my for the terminologies thanks ranga Though utilizing a run flat tire may temporarily spare you from unanticipated delays, it isn't a permanent solution to your problem. Eventually, that run flat tire is going to reach the end of its useful life, and you're going to need to install a long-term replacement tire to get your car back on track. This is a nice way to differentiate between high availability and disaster recovery. Planning for high availability helps you ensure that your infrastructure can withstand a micro-disaster like losing a disk in a storage array. The DR plan ensures that your infrastructure and business can handle losing the entire storage array. HA doesn't entirely overlap with DR, but it's often necessary to take HA into account when you're thinking about RTO and RPO values. HA helps ensure an agreed upon level of operational performance, usually uptime, uh, for a higher than normal period. However, it doesn't guarantee that you're prepared for a service interruption. To illustrate this point, uh, I'll walk through an example. First, we'll look at a standalone, highly available disk array. If a single disk in this array fails, the array itself and the data that it stores remain available to you and your users, just like the run flat tire. Next, we'll consider the same disk array without warm or hot replication to a secondary site. The array can still withstand the failure of a single disk, but if an unexpected service interruption occurs and the entire array goes down, the array and the data that it stores are no longer available to you or to your customers. Lastly, let's consider the same array, but add a second array in a different location. To give this configuration a warm or a hot DR pattern, we will also implement a replication tool to synchronize the array to our secondary data center. Now, if that array experiences a single disk failure, or if the entire array goes down, the data remains available for us to use via the secondary array. We've combined HA and DR to create a DR plan that provides us with ephemeral storage on traditional DR that can withstand a service interruption. Combining HA and DR is just one way to protect your business from service interruptions. Let's talk about some additional best practices for creating and updating your DR plan. There's no one-size-fits-all model for DR, but there are many common decision points that most organizations should consider. No matter what your specific DR requirements are, you need a robust, flexible, and cost-effective selection of products that you can use to build the solution that's right for you. An intuitive place to start planning is with your company's recovery goals. When designing your DR plan, consider both your application data and your data recovery techniques to ensure that you're looking at the big picture. The typical way to do this is to examine your RTO and RPO requirements and identify which DR pattern, hot, warm, or cold, you should adopt to meet those objectives. For example, your historical compliance data isn't something that you're likely to need in a failed state. So a large RTO value and a cold DR pattern is appropriate. If, on the other hand, your customer-facing storefront experiences an interruption, you'll want to be able to recover both the data and the web components of the application as quickly as possible. In that case, a hot pattern would be more appropriate to ensure that the outage isn't impacting your company's revenue. Now, designing for end-to-end -end recovery. There's always a sense of relief and accomplishment when you've completed a DR test and have verified that things are working as designed. As unlikely as it seems, we've worked with customers who have comprehensive DR plans and have had great luck executing their DR test, but don't actually have a plan in place to fail their data back to production. Make sure your DR plan addresses the full recovery process, uh, from backup to restore to cleanup. Uh, a DR plan that leaves your environment indefinitely stuck in a failed state is not a good plan. Uh, make your test specific. When the bad day arrives that forces you to execute your DR plan, you don't want to waste time guessing what the steps in your runbooks mean. Make each task in your DR plan consist of one or more concrete, unambiguous commands or actions. Our common guidance is to create documentation that's straightforward enough that a person with no technical skills whatsoever would be able to execute it. Uh, implementing control measures. Of course, the, the best way to avoid the complexities of a DR event is to prevent the event from happening in the first place. Add a monitor that sends an alert when the master node on your database cluster starts hopping around for no apparent reason. If you're deploying code with the CICD pipeline, uh, configure an email alert to be sent when the data destructive flow, uh, such as a deletion pipeline, has been executed. Make sure you're keeping yourself informed of changes in your production environment, intentional or unintentional. Uh, Ranga? Thank you, Mike. Uh, in continuation of the DR planning, 
assess your software. It is also important to understand how your OS applications are licensed for DR. In many cases, there are no additional charge. However, it always a best practice to take into consideration when planning a DR. Implement software and compliance control. When you design DR plan, security and compliance is important. The same controls that you have in your production environment must apply to your recovered environment. Make sure that your network controls provide the same separations and blocking that are the source of production environment uses. Security controls that you have applied to your production data also applies to your DR environment. The same permissions, encryptions, and audit requirements. Support plan. You don't want to be in a situation during your DR event, don't know who to call and don't have that contact. Build a call tree, know you to contact and how to contact and ensure that details are up to date. Have a primary and secondary contact numbers. Emails are not the best options. Having one or more people as a backup for an activity is advisable. Define your recovery paths. Uh, this is very key. When you build a playbook, with more, uh, you need to have more than one recovery path to account for any unforeseen blockers. So that way you have a well-defined uh, execution steps during your disaster recovery. Building a DR plan is one major milestone. You need to test and validate the DR plan to be 100% certain that you can recover during a DR scenario and also able to meet recovery objectives. You want to make sure that your planning pays off by making sure that if disaster strike, everything works as you intended. Test your plan regularly. Um, the conduct DR exercise regularly noting that any issues that come up and adjust your plan accordingly. Since DR environment will be your production environment for a while, make sure your assess compliance are same as uh, production. Make sure that you have granted appropriate rights to the users, developers, operators, and security administrators. Perform penetration test on your DR environment. Best practice to keep your DR plan up to date is to add DR criteria to your production change management. So that way any changes, any production application changes to your production environment has a checkpoint to refer back to your DR plan. Back to you, Mike. Thanks, Ranga. So now that we've discussed kind of the best practices of building a plan and validating a plan, um, well, let's move on to actually executing the plan. Uh, you can't put a DR plan in place without understanding your infrastructure. You know, traditional DR environments can quickly become very complex as well as very costly. Uh, with traditional DR, you rely on a private or third-party data center to house your infrastructure. You're paying that provider for rack space, power and cooling, and bandwidth utilization. These fixed costs can escalate quickly. In addition to your fixed data center costs, you're also likely paying for duplicate hardware for your DR data center. And you're also responsible for managing hardware and firmware updates, hardware refresh cycles, and plan outages during maintenance windows. Executing a plan in these operational items comes with an additional cost, your time. In most cases, your highest skilled engineers are managing and troubleshooting your DR environment and making sure that it is up to date. Those engineers are also likely highly leveraged in the event of a DR test or an unexpected outage. Their knowledge is required to execute manual failover steps, troubleshoot unexpected issues, and validate the environment. In our experience, the act of failing over your systems can take just as long or longer than testing them after they've been failed over. Lastly, your DR infrastructure and replicated DR data introduce attack factors that can expose your business to additional risk. Uh, we can make things easier and less expensive in GCP. Uh, with your DR and GCP, your resources reside in Google's data centers and receive the same protections that secure Google's assets. You're no longer stuck footing the bill for power and cooling, and you no longer have to send an expensive resource to a remote data center to replace a failed disk drive. By replicating your data to GCP, you can free yourself of paying for and maintaining redundant hardware. In addition, you only pay for what you consume in GCP. There's no need to maintain hot or warm instances in GCP every day of the year. With the correct tools in place, you can stand up the resources that you need when you need them and tear them down when they aren't in use. When it is time to fail over to GCP, you can leverage infrastructure as code, orchestration, and automation to speed up your failover process and to reduce the workloads of your skilled engineers. Instead of spending time manually executing failover steps and runbooks, 
SMEs can focus on identifying the root cause of an outage or verifying that their applications are up and running in DR. You can also leverage your replicated data to stand up ephemeral isolated testing environments in GCP. Cloudback DR not only provides you with a cost efficient pa fast path to recovery, but it also affords you the ability to test your entire environment, a single application, or plan changes to your production applications without introducing additional risks to your operations. It's also worth noting that your data is encrypted both in transit and at rest when it resides on Google Cloud Platform. Lastly, and we're frequently asked this question, Google does not have access to the data that you store in GCP. They maintain the infrastructure on which your data resides, but they do not have insight into what you're running on that infrastructure. Ranga? Thank you, Mike. As Mike highlighted the benefits for cloud GCP DR solution, this solution also helps to achieve significantly better RTO, RPO objectives at a fraction of cost compared to on-premises. How can we achieve this objective? By modernizing the DR. Um, what I mean by is, is like to, we can automate the whole uh, DR objective uh, plan in the GCP. The best practice is to provision your DR environment using an ISC. This will help in repeatable error-free automation. Another best practice is to modularize your infrastructure as a code. Uh, by modularizing, you will be able to recover system only what you need for the individual application testing purposes. So for example, if you have a multi-tier application um, and if you want to recover just that database, this uh, IAC modularizing the IAC plan will help you to recover only the, uh, the required database in the DR environment. And then you can move on with your testing activities. Pay for what you use when you need to use. Building a DR with IAC infrastructure as a code help you to build when you need it and tear it down when you're not in use. Reduce operational complexity and time for failover by having a modernized your run books, including the infrastructure as a code, your application deployment and testing, you can make sure that the complexity of the DR plan can be reduced and, and reduce the resilience on the subject matter expertise to execute the failover step. Back to you, Mike. Thanks, Ranga. Uh, so what does DR and GCP actually look like? Uh, this diagram shows how a typical on-premise VMware environment would backend its data in GCP. In this example, we've selected Actifio as our data replication tool. Uh, keep in mind that most cloud data replication and protection tools share similar uh, architectures, and that this architecture is indicative of common practice. In this diagram, uh, the items on the left side of the red line comprise the steady state infrastructure in DR for GCP. The items on the right side of the red line depict resources that are required only in the event of a DR event or test. Similarly, we've also split on-premise and GCP resources into their own logical squares on the left and right sides of the slide. Uh, so starting on the left, the data center square houses a traditional high-level VMware infrastructure. In this square, we have a handful of VMs managed by a hypervisor. That hypervisor is managing all of the resources that power the VMs and is capturing their reads and writes to shared storage. In place of a traditional DR replication appliance uh, or software, uh, we've added a virtual Actifio Sky appliance to the VMware infrastructure. Similar to uh, traditional backup appliance, the Sky appliance is capturing incremental changes to the VMware storage and saving that VMware data in its own storage cache. The Actifio appliance encrypts that data and can dedupe it on the fly or periodically on a schedule of your choosing. Uh, the deduplication prevents you from storing multiple copies of your uh, base operating systems or other commonly kept data multiple times. In place of standing up a secondary replication appliance at a traditional DR facility, we've instead placed a virtual Actifio Sky appliance in GCP and provisioned some storage for it. That appliance is receiving the deduped and encrypted data over a secure channel and is storing it on an encrypted volume in GCP. Sitting above that Sky appliance in GCP, we also have an Actifio Global Manager appliance. Similar to your on-premise hypervisor, uh, the Global Manager oversees the activities of the Sky appliances. More importantly, the Global Manager is what you use to productionalize your DR plan. On it, you configure your backup schedules, failover groups, and other settings to ensure that you are protecting your data in line with your SLAs and your RTOs and RPOs. It also provides you with a means to orchestrate your DR failover and to attach startup scripts and runback activities to each machine. These two Actifio appliances comprise your steady state uh, DR infrastructure in GCP. Once you've configured uh, the Actifio environment and have implemented your DR plan, 
you're ready for a DR event, or hopefully just some testing. This is when we talk about the resources on the right side of the red line. In the event that you want to test a specific application in DR, uh, you would restore the volumes in machine that you need uh, in a test state in GCP via ActiveVO. In this test state, none of the changes that you make on the GCP instances are replicated back to ActiveVO. Instead, you're working on an isolated copy of the data uh, that you've restored uh, in GCP via ActiveVO. Your production instances are continuing to function and replicate data as they normally would during this time. The other new concept here is cost. When you power these resources up, you are charged for them as long as they're powered on. When you are done testing, simply delete the machines and restore the, uh, and the restore disks from GCP and stop accruing costs. Uh, in the event that you need to fail over an entire application or environment to handle a service interruption, the process is very similar. Navigate to the ActiveVO console and restore the volumes and machines that you need to GCP in a failover state. These resources can be, uh, sorry, these restores can be performed either one at a time or in mass, depending on how you've configured ActiveVO and what your DR plan is. You may also have some additional in, uh, infrastructure as code or some orchestration in place here to help speed up your restore process. Uh, once the machines are online, changes made to the restored volumes are replicated back to the ActiveVO Sky appliance in GCP. You can run your environment in this configuration until service has been restored uh, in your on-premise environment. When you're ready to fail back, uh, initiate a sync on the GCP Sky appliance to replicate the changes back to your on-premise Sky appliance. Once the changes have been synced back to the production Sky appliance, you can restore those changes to your production VMs whenever you're ready. After you've verified that services have been restored successfully on-premise, tear down uh, the instances in GCP and stop accruing costs for the extra GCP infrastructure. In addition to the resiliency provided by Actifio, your DR infrastructure and GCP is subject to numer the numerous benefits provided by the platform itself. You get HA uh, for resilient disks and CPUs, uh, native load balancing, snapshots, et cetera. Running machines uh, in this DR state also provides a nice preview of what migrating and running your production infrastructure in GCP uh, might look like. Ronka's going to wrap things up now by talking about how MavenWave can help you get your DR into GCP. Thank you, Mike. We have talked about DR and DR best practices and one of the DR solutions in MavenWave DR toolset. How MavenWave can help you in your cloud GCP DR migration. The process MavenWave follow is to understand and assess your DR plan and bake in the cloud DR objectives to build cloud DR plan specific to your customer. Using MavenWave's GCP cloud foundation methodology, and client-specific recovery requirements, MavenWare will design and deploy the DR solutions in GCP. We will test and validate the DR plan to ensure it meets established DR objectives. We will then transition DR runbook to either client operational team or MavenWave DR managed service team. MavenWave has managed service offering to help with your DR needs. The offering includes testing your DR plan regularly, and should a DR event happen, MavenWave will help you to recover, execute your DR plan. No matter what your DR needs look like, MavenWave can help you with your cloud DR migration. Okay, so that's all that we have for today. Uh, on behalf of Maven Wave, thank all of you for attending. Uh, we hope you found this helpful, and we will now open up the session for questions. So if you have any questions, feel free to jump in the chat box now and type them in. Um, we have one so far that we'll kick things off with for you, Mike and Ranga. Um, you mentioned infrastructure as code in the presentation. Is that a requirement for DR on GCP? Does MavenWave typically offer their clients help in building out the IAC that they need? Uh, Ranga, I'll take this one. Uh, so no, uh, infrastructure as code isn't a requirement, uh, but it, it will make your job easier in, in GCP, whether you're using it for uh, production or for DR. Um, if you're standing up things on the fly, it will help reduce your margin of error. You're less likely to make mistakes if you can just run a template to, to instantiate your environment. Um, we, we do generally try to use infrastructure as code as a, as a best practice, um, no matter what kind of environment we're implementing. Um, and we certainly can provide guidance to, to get you on your way if that's the direction you want to go in. Great. Thanks, Mike. 
Um, one another question came in. Um, if we move our DR infrastructure to GCP, can MavenWave assist us in learning more about the GCP platform? Mike, I'll, I'll take this one. Um, MavenWave as a cloud foundation workshop that we regularly execute as part of our engagements. Our GCP architects have workshops um, that is catered to the individual clients and have a lot of experience training our customers to bring their cloud journey to GCP. Majority of our GCP architects have passed GCP professional architecture exam and has run this workshop many times to help uh, jumpstart the client for the uh, GCP journey. Great, thanks Ranga. Um, what protections are in place to ensure that data replicated to GCP is secure? Um, I, can, I can take this, Ranga. Uh, so this will depend on what replication tool you've selected uh, and also the design you've set up in GCP. Um, in most cases, the replication tools that you would use to get your data uh, to GCP uh, will encrypt your data um, in transit and at rest uh, um, on both sides of uh, your environment, the on-prem and the cloud environment. Um, beyond that, uh, MavenWave can assist you in setting up a secure link between your on-premise environment uh, and, and GCP. There, there are several options there, um, but there are also several options for securing that data while it's in transit. Uh, and whether you opt for uh, direct connection to Google or just configure um, a point-to-point -point VPN, um, you know, that, that traffic will be protected. Um, and then, of course, once it gets to Google, uh, you'll rely on the native platform protections there uh, to keep that data encrypted uh, in REST and, uh, or at REST and in transit. Thanks, Mike. All right, guys, it looks like we have one more question here. Is any additional infrastructure besides the Actifio appliances required in GCP to run your environment in a failed state? Mike, uh, I'll take this one. Um, the, the, the short answer is you don't have to have any other uh, um, infrastructure in place uh, other than the active appliance to recover your DR state, because as part of your DR plan, you will be recovering the necessary applications in that environment. But as a best practices, there might be uh, if you put in some core foundational like your um, in, uh, identity management, like Act, or Active Directory or any other uh, IDS tool in GCP, um, then it, it makes your recovery time less. And also any other infrastructures like the, your connectivities and everything is in place. This will help your uh, reduce shorter uh, recovery time uh, with the core foundation already in place. Great. Well, thank you both so much for presenting today. I don't see any additional questions coming in. Um, however, if anyone does have additional questions, Ranga and Mike's email addresses are on this last slide here. So do feel free to reach out. Um, and thank you again, everyone, for joining us today. Thank you, Mike and Ranga, for your great insights. Um, we'll be sending a link out to this webinar later today uh, for, to a recording. Um, so feel free to get in touch if you have any additional questions and uh, stay tuned for future webinars. Thanks everyone.